Welcome back to Starfield. So we're going to continue exploring this UC headquarters. So we've already been to the first four areas. We need to go to the Nat Station and the Vanguard Orientation Hall. Oh, okay, maybe we have been here. Yeah, we did go here before. Yeah, this is where we uh, saw that one woman and we had to give her coffee. Our whole office is getting moved to Gagarin. Really? Yeah, we're good. Alright. Let's go back. So the last place to go to is the Vanguard Orientation Hall. Man, we've been here. We pretty much... Each of these areas were like one episode. So we've been here like at least four episodes, four or five episodes. It's a pretty massive area. It takes a while for me to get through these areas because I'm exploring everywhere and looting everything and all that stuff. Can't talk to these two? My family never had any love for the UC after the Colony War. They're probably disgusting. Really hope all this historical junk that. isn't gonna be on the Look, test. You didn't hear it from me, but I got a tip there's a way to hack the Vanguard exam. Get yourself a better score. There's a way to hack the exam. You enlisting too? I've always wanted to live in New Atlantis, but they only let citizens buy property, so here I am. Signing up for the Vanguard? You want the terminals then? Or did you just pop by for two heaping scoops of propaganda? You've been through the exhibit? UC certainly likes to talk about itself, huh? I mean, I don't like the UC any more than the next guy, but they've got the credits. You've been through the exhibit? UC certainly likes to talk about itself, huh? Vanguard registration. Applicant name, Razor XP, current bounty zero. To register for your examination, please select enlist agreement. Though any outstanding UC bounty must be paid before proceeding. Oop. Consent documented. You may proceed to the examination chamber through the orientation hall. I kind of skipped through that really fast by mistake. Okay. Okay, I guess this is the examination hall. Whoa. What's up, buddy? How do I gun butt? I don't remember what button it was. I'm gonna save it just in case I accidentally. Okay, the glove doesn't move. Nope. Dang, shooting it doesn't make it move either. Alright, whatever. I like how I shoot my gun and the dude don't even flinch or anything. Our mic fell, hold on. You think he would attack me f because I shot, but nope. New factions rise. Button. 
That pension doesn't go as far as it used to. But wandering around down here with a cup of coffee, hmm? there are worse ways to spend a couple hours. The Free Star Collective and House Varun have been thorns on UC side since day one. Wonder if folks from that era regretted letting them leave. UC sank a lot of money into this place. They say it's to teach foreign pilots our history. I think it's more about telling history how they want it told. Please don't touch the displays. Don't tell me what to do. You looking for the exam room? Just down the hall. Try not to disturb the other patrons, okay? I will jerk off right in front of their, f right in front of them. Look, I'm not supposed to be giving opinions on this stuff, but the UC is in a lot better hands these days than back before they signed the armistice. Hmm. Huh. Good for them, I guess. What does this button do? From their foundation, the United Colonies strove to provide all their citizens with opportunity, security, and peace. But there were those among the UC that still wanted something more. Independence. So in 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation, granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds and form their own sovereign powers. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 2188, later followed by House Varun, revealing themselves to the universe in 2230. You know, this kind of reminded me of a uh, 7 Remake. Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Remember that? I don't know if you guys played that game, but uh, in the Shinra building, when you go there, uh, you have like, kind of like displays like that. And it just reminded me of that for some reason. The history of the nation war, beginning in... Oh, how long is this? Holy shit. Alright. <laughs> beginning in 2198, the nation war, humanity's first large-scale conflict among the stars is remembered as a defining moment for the settled systems. As the first major conflict to make extensive use of grad jump enabled ships, the Narian War was less defined by key space battles and more by an extended cat and mouse interplay between the two powers as the well-armed and professional UC Navy tried again and again to pin down the place mill but savvy free star fleet. Unable to strike the killing blow the UC resorted to ever more severe tactics to try and drive the collective to capsulate but without success in fact after many long years of war with little to show for it even the populace of the UC itself began to turn against the calls with protests rolling even new Atlantis citizenry demanding the war finally come to a humane close so when at long last the final blow was struck with the UC Navy finally cornering and obliterating the Free Star Fleet in 2216, it was a hollow victory. It was from the resulting negotiation, the Treaty of Narian, that the settled systems as we know them today merged both literally and figuratively. Despite winning the war, the UC found themselves in an uninevitable, unenviable position, I mean. Painted as a brutal aggressor even in their home systems. So in the spirit of unity and lasting peace, the UC agreed to the demand of the Free Star Collective and the Narian settlers whose collusion triggered the conflict in the first place and handed over Narian to the Collective as they had requested at the start of hostilities, including the clinic medical s star station. Creating the Free Star Collective as we know it to this day. In return, the UC demanded two 
concessions. The first was payment for damages done in the form of mineral rights on multiple worlds across the galaxy. The second more significant demand was that no great faction may ever colonize more than three systems. The UC would have Alpha Centauri, Soul, and Wolf, and the Free Star Collective Chan, uh, Balil, and Narian. The Free Star Collective agreed to these terms, creating and codifying them into law. The settled system as we know them today, the Treaty of Narian has since become the foundation of all contemporary political relations and it's only official violation that calls the galaxy's greatest conflict the colony war. So for more about the colony war, please proceed to the conflict among the stars mural. Yeah, so we're getting some backstory from the UC, like a war war that happened in the past. And that's how it was in the Shinra building in Final Fantasy VII Remake. You had these, like, displays going on, and it was telling you the history of Shinra and all that stuff. This right here is how you do lore though. This is a good way to do lore. And I like this. This is pretty awesome. It's very informative. It's easy to follow. Short and sweet. And it looks cool. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions, none was more brutal than the recent colony war between the UC and the Freestar Collective. Set off by the unauthorized Freestar colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308, a direct violation of the Nerion Treaty, the colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat platforms, or mechs. Even bioengineered alien creatures, the infamous you see Xeno weapons. It was only in 2311 at the Battle of Cheyenne that the scales finally tipped. The Free Star Collective, utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield, successfully crippled the superior United Colonies Navy. After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Free Star Collective offered terms of peace, which the colonies out of an interest in staving off any further human costs, accepted. The galaxy has been rebuilding ever since. Uh, this ain't nothing new though, Bethesda's been, Bethesda's always been really good with lore, especially with the Elder Scrolls games. Like there are so many like books and shit that you can read in Skyrim and Oblivion and I didn't really play Morrowind for very long but I'm pretty sure there was a lot of books in that game too and you, all that's just basically lore and everything is just so much like it is ridiculous how much lore they put in their games and you can say the Fallout games too but it's just well yeah there's a lot of lore in Fallout too I mean was some UC general that condemned Londinian? 
gave it over to these things. One of these murals said he was executed after the war. Might have gotten off too lightly. But in my opinion, I just feel like the Elder Scrolls has more lore than Fallout. But maybe that's just me. But anyway, let's do this one. In the midst of a colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort. Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. A rare but pervasive threat to all human settled worlds, Terramorphs swept over the city seemingly out of nowhere on a scale never before seen in recorded history. Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city, the outbreak, and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC to this day. I think with how massive this game is, there'll probably be more lore in this game than there will be in Skyrim. Or it was in Skyrim. No knows how they move between planets. I wonder if they can... Dad wanted me to apply for the administration track at school, but... I'm going to be a xenobiologist. It's science division or nothing. One of my slates said Terramorphs can control people's minds. But that can't be true. All four of my last science papers have been on Terramorphs. We did see in the trailers uh, like a telekinetic power of some sort, like a magical, I guess you could say like magical power or something, like, or son sonic power of some sort. I guess that's something you can get in this game. All four of my last science papers have been on Terramorphs. I bring her here almost every day to stare at this thing. I really hope this is just a phase. This thing's like an artist's rendition, right? No animal can be this ugly in real life. This thing's like an artist's rendition, right? No animal can be this ugly in real life. So does this thing exist in the game? Can we actually fight one of these things? I wonder if we'll actually fight one of these later. Huh. Alright, well let's continue. The Armistice. the armistice article there shall be I'll just leave it on the screen you guys can read it I can read it but it's just like the text is a bit too small um, so yeah you can read it if you want to the vanguard is born like the Crimson Fleet is everywhere these days, spreading like a virus through the settled systems. 
They like to set up shop in old facilities, places abandoned in the colony war. That way they can strike anywhere. Everything good? We're here to help. You don't need to wear your helmet on this planet. You know that, right? Do we can we take the helmet off? Because everybody keeps saying that. Okay, the Vanguard is born. It was into this new world that the Vanguard was born. An official branch of the UC Navy, the Vanguard is the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet, serving a myriad of security, logistical, and reconnaissance roles. And after a sufficient length of service, UC citizenship is guaranteed to every Vanguard member. Open to all captains, regardless of origin, the Vanguard is leading the charge to protect and support the citizens of the United Colonies, wherever in the galaxy they may be. Look, I'm not supposed to be giving opinions on this stuff, but the UC is in a lot better hands these days than back before they signed the armistice. Try not to disturb the other patrons, okay? You looking for the exam room? Just down the hall. Please don't touch the displays. No one is born a United Colony citizen. Only through service to the UC can one hope to earn one citizenship. You see, prides itself on taking care of its people. Cost of living controls mean citizens pay less than their foreign counterparts for needs big and small. All citizens are issued a grant upon joining to get themselves on their feet. And only UC citizens have the opportunity to purchase property, getting the chance to live in one of the most beautiful cities in the settled systems. By joining the Vanguard today, you too can begin earning your place here, in the heart of galactic civilization, as a citizen of the United Colonies. Yeah, but yeah, that was pretty cool. I think that's the end of the displays and all that stuff. Masked Vanguard Pilot Simulator, uh oh. When we go to the simulator, this is gonna go badly probably. Research lab. Is there anybody here? Or can we just take this shit? There's someone up there, but. Ah! <laughs> he was up there. How do you catch me stealing? Oh well. Research lab.
I can't make any of this stuff. The dude's looking. Guess so we gotta go over there. Try to steal then. I know what I'm eventually gonna do. Well, actually, I could probably steal over here, but. Still our toilet paper. How much weight do I have right now? Probably a ridiculous amount. Yeah, 467. Which is insane. Utility flight suit. Moby Dick. <laughs> Vanguard Space Tactic 01. Ship missiles permanently deal 5% more damage. Ooh. That's handy. Ooh, 600 credits. There was someone looking at me right down there. If I can get up here and steal it. Yeah, you should be able to see me up here. Call me Ismail some years ago. Never mind how long precisely. Having little or no money in my purse. Nothing particular to interest me on shore. I thought I would sell about sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. And so continues Melville's classic tale, Vengeance Obsession, for a total of 341 pages. <laughs> I just I like how I'm stealing from up above, that's hilarious. Alright. We pretty much cut everything here. Gray stylus. K 
Okay. Then guard. There's a lot of foam cups here. It's so hard to see. Do I have my light on? Crimson cabin, fields of everglass. Those are new books, so we can't read them because it'll be, it's considered stealing. I think they should let you steal the steal the books. Exam Proctor Samuelson. Ah, you must be our new applicant. I'm Proctor Samuelson. The simulator's already been prepped. You can head in whenever you're ready. Can you tell me about this exam? Of course. You'll be running through a high realism combat flight simulation, engineered by members of the UC science staff, right here in MAST. Your task is to defeat at least three tiers of simulated opponents. Accomplish that and you pass the exam, and can then proceed on to your probationary mission. However, if you defeat more than three tiers of enemies, your required enlistment time for citizenship will be reduced, and your enlistment bonus increased. But you're welcome to try as many times as you like before returning to Commander Tuwala to proceed on to the next step in your application process. We'll only keep the highest score you manage to achieve in there. While I can't answer that question directly, I will say this. Due to the solitary nature of our work, resourcefulness is a critical tool in any Vanguard pilot's repertoire. You're permitted, even encouraged, to use whatever tool you're able to find in there. The simulator is designed to be a near-perfect replica of a Class B Deimos hoplite the United Colonies' standard destroyer model. It's been tuned to provide a challenging but fair fight against the enemy squadrons you'll encounter inside. Just head in whenever you're ready. I don't want to say the other thing. Oh shit. This is the Mark 18 flight simulation chamber applicant currently in orbit around a high detail recreation of a remote world. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair. All right, I'm gonna end the video here. In the next episode, we'll do this flight simulator thing. 
Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. I can't believe I'm ending right here, but I didn't. I thought we were supposed to go through the other door to get to the simulator. I thought this was something else, but whatever. Thanks for watching. Later.